Hello and welcome back. This week you find us in Plymouth. We find two new choice anchor spots. We learn some new things about one of Plymouth's most unassuming heroes. We do a bit of boat shopping for a friend, of course, and we demonstrate how easy it is to run aground in Salcombe. It is seven o'clock of a Monday morning and we are currently heading out of the River Dart and heading down somewhere we've never been before. We're going to try the liner down in Plymouth, so see how the day goes. But with boating, you have to see what happens. Our plan today was to go to Plymouth, but I messed up with the tide times and had a tide and a wind on the nose. So we were just going nowhere and decided to turn into Selcombe. It is raining outside, horrible and moody. We've anchored up and this is how we kill our time. Hello. Playing cards. We play cards. And um... Sipping a nice scot. Go on then. But rain or shine, our hero has to go for his walk. That noise in the background you can hear is actually our heater because it's so cold. Since we acquired our oversized anchor, we are a lot more confident with just dropping the hook. We found that anchoring affords a privacy and a quietness and is often free. How on earth do you beat this? We're on to our second cup of coffee, discussing the problems of the world. Wow. Your thoughts, Maxine? Just, how could you beat this? Beautiful England, great coffee. And this has got to be one of the best views to wake up to in the morning. If anybody's got a good idea about how to get the engine onto the dinghy, please let us know because it's only a matter of time in my opinion. Try not to make old man sounds. Hey. You didn't fall in, that's good enough. Yeah, and there we go, engine on, piece of cake. Oh. They only carry one litre of petrol these, so when I'm going on a little trip, I always make sure I've got two tiny little one litre steel cans full of petrol, because it will catch you out. Third start, all resist. However, with three of us in the dinghy, I think we need the big engine. As we were saying earlier on, the boat contain, takes one litre of petrol and we've just run out midstream, but I can highly recommend these aluminium safe bottles and a funnel on your boat. So refueled, we carry on up to Kingsbridge. Stopping on the way to look at some curious sights, this little boat is up for sale. Only a pound. Any takers? King 
Kingsbridge is new to us. We've never been here before. But it's quite interesting to have a look around. Just looking around the market, just looking around the market, and you see unusual things. Where else could you come to buy hand grenades and handcuffs? Yeah. Thanks to um, octopuses I made the uh, day before yesterday. I make them as I go along. I try and make them in the winter, but it's not very nice in a garage in the winter, is it? Oh. It's cold. up with water again and they always take the opportunity to fill up with water even though we're not empty so we're moving again but we're not really looking where we're going uh, run the ground after having a warning off somebody and I still run the ground how can we get off I can't believe you told me and I went, thanks. I should listen to you, shouldn't I? What can we do? Time's coming in, luckily. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah, we'll sit here and have a beer. You see. Yeah, what can I say? Um, where everybody's watching going, that yacht's run aground. I've run aground in Selkirk. It wasn't my fault, though. We were okay though. Harbour Master's seen it all before and just gave us a couple of pushes in the right direction and the boat was free. Thank you, sir. We're free. Free. Whoa. Such a nice man. So back out onto the sea and sailing again. Conditions are more favorable today. It's a close reach, but at least we've got the tide with us today. And then some beautiful locals come and sail with us. Sail into Plymouth and anchor in a place called Barn Pool. This is Mount Edgecombe on the Tamar in Plymouth, and this is our anchorage for the night. We were warned by a local sailor to always use a trip on your anchor here because there's all kinds of things sitting on the bottom to trap your anchor. Swimming was really nice here too. Not a bad place to be. I'll have to find out about this, but... Apparently he worked on speedboats 
and was able to develop a really fast boat that could rescue people at sea. And was instrumental in saving some 1300 lives. Although it's mid-season, the weather in England this year has been pretty awful. So many people in boats have gone elsewhere. So we've got everywhere to ourselves. Which is absolutely ideal. While waiting for the tide, we had a look around the gardens of Edgecombe House. Both the formal and the informal gardens were lovely. For our next anchorage, we had to get the tides exactly right. Dandy Hole can only be reached at high tide. And once the tide goes out, you have to stay there. One theory is that it's an underground spring that stops that part of the river from silting up. but it's surrounded by lush green banks, which Hero loves. I'm glad we found this place. It's free, it's very interesting, and we will definitely be back. We're on the edge of another storm system that's rolling in from the Atlantic, so we're going to head back to the dot. Join us next time as we get caught in possibly the worst storm we have ever been out in. Until then, fair winds, keep safe and see you on the water. <laughs>